Hi everybody. Welcome to another episode of From the Bottom Up. As usual, I've got David here with me. Welcome, David. Thank you. It's <laughs> lovely to be here. It's uh, essential and a joy. <laughs> <laughs> essential and a joy. Okay. I would not be doing this right now without you. <laughs> Especially this topic. I thought, um, I thought today we could go into the topic of control. And we've been, we actually touched in it, on it a bit, even just before the camera went on air, where you were saying that it'd be a lot easier if they had told us when we were younger in first grade yeah. that you can go ahead and live this life, but be aware that there's a deep control issue. Yeah, underneath. authority problem underneath. It'd be nice if that was in our first grade curriculum. <laughs> To talk about the authority issue underneath, way, way, way deep in the mind, uh, given a little context to the what was to come. Yeah. yeah. It's funny when I just think of it in this moment that that's the only problem. There's actually a sense of relief. Mm, yeah. With that, not that it's removed or something, but because that's that's probably the core question that's been coming up, you know, Lesson 79 and 80 was the last mm -hmm. two days. And um, I feel like I've just given my heart to those lessons around, let me recognize the problem so that it can be solved. To the extent you do not attempt to define the problem, you will reap the benefits of this lesson. And then today's, you know, let me perceive the problem has been solved. And the glimpse I get is, is like some kind of just a feeling of lightness and some kind of a, an alternate identity or something mm. like nothing that I would ever call human. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, it's hard to ask if that's the real me and the real me wouldn't even ask that because you just know, I guess, but, but I've just been giving myself to that. And then, yeah, especially yesterday. And then this morning I just prayed for a miracle because there was this kind of still like a bit of a, a stiffness or a tightness and and then I was in a meeting today and something that I had really enjoyed doing I talked with you a bit about this earlier was just pulled out from me and I just felt this panic and it was just like went back to my room and just like burst into tears like and I got dizzy and was floating and I didn't know where I was or what I'm doing and I just had this joining with you and it felt really helpful and like a connection was all that was really needed but yeah I just I feel like the main thing is this control issue can you re can I really just give myself over to seeing that that is the only problem control and authority problem or you know the decision to separate from God can I really do that or no, you're going to have to call so-and-so and this will help you get out of it. No, um, do this with these documents or do this because, yeah, I'm trying to go towards some of them. And in the conversations, I'm just dizzy. I'm like, they ask me things and I can't, I can't track it. And is that, is that my resistance to the, me the means to go through it? Or is that just like, be gentle with yourself? You know, you've got to face the one problem and at the right moment, those things will be fine. So that's my core question right now. Maybe I've asked this a hundred times before, but it feels like I've never asked it. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think it's that the Holy Spirit is seen as a, a spark in terms of uh, brothers and sisters. as a spark in our brother and sister, and then we really have to look for that spark because uh, it will get disorienting and dizzy if we try to have a couple overlays or we have a number of things going on simultaneously and which makes it seem very complex on the surface of things and I would say that as we go much much deeper it's extremely different than anything we ever conceived of and uh, it's not that it's difficult but it's extremely different and that's like a radical thing in itself when you become accustomed to complexity and 
accustomed to human interactions and accustomed to multiple varied um, problems on many different levels, then this way of deep release, you know, is it seems extremely different. It seems radically different. It's, it is helpful to remember that that it it is easy that in the end the the tweak the the surrender the release the giving over is is a relief it's it's a relief because it's so simple but but it's the, the fear is of of losing something that somehow the complexity or the upside down perception had some value and then there's a, a fear of chaos, a fear of losing control, a fear of whatever you want to call it, abandonment and rejection, all kinds of things you could call it, but that's really just the fear of love, the fear of, of letting go. So after we had joined, I, I just laid down and just let myself go into kind of a peace, rest, and then, I don't know if it was sleep or deep meditation, sometimes I can't tell mm -hmm. the difference, but then I, all of a sudden I woke up and I was like this fear. It was just like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like so, like so intense. It was like, I've got to get out of this. And then I just focused again and, and it disappeared. But did I just like shove that fear down or did I choose again when it disappeared? That's, this is what's more terrifying is somehow I'm just, using this power okay there's there's no like what's today's uh, uh let me recognize my problems have been solved let me recognize my problems have been solved when i say that it's almost like it's like come on i've got this thing to do and this thing to do you know and mm -hmm. so it's, but then there does there's a moment that comes not necessarily because i say it but it just comes like out of grace where I'm like, whoa, that really is the only <laughs> problem. Mm -hmm. But to just say it, is that like, I don't know, I feel like I might just be shoving it down and in denial. So I, yeah. Well, most, I think most people, even before they come to the course, you know, have a, quite a lot of defense and defense mechanisms in place. And then the first experience of working with the course is it starts to flush those defense mechanisms into awareness and then there's a judgment about that and then and then there's almost a, a doubt or self-doubt or sarcasm that can come you know because it's it's recognized but it's like the feeling is oh i've been doing this for so long mm -hmm. you know it's like yeah that would be nice if i could could turn that around or or drop it and then i think it starts to touch in the mind that uh -huh. uh, I have to really be earnest about this and I I have to really be sincere and and that's really what the workbook lesson is saying he's even saying you may not be completely successful today but give it you know give it your uh -huh. best shot really try to give it all that you've got um, because that's just the, really the faith and the trust and the willingness that it's going to take anyway, and you're building that. You're building that faith and trust and willingness. So, you know, it's not surprising that that sometimes there's. You're kind of wondering, am, am I regressing or advancing? <laughs> and really, the advance is occurring, whether the mind knows it or, or not. It is advancing. It's just that that self doubt that. It was, am I pushing this out of awareness again? Um, so I think that if I look back to my childhood and, and adolescence and early adulthood, there was so much denial and repression that was there. It was so much that, that when I started to just open up and it started to peel away, and it was very intense. It was extreme, almost like everything was imploding in on me, like all that repression and denial had, had now I had to go the other direction, and it felt very, very threatening. I remember in in uh, graduate school th thinking like, uh, as the course came into my life, I had my first relationship with a woman, and and I had grad school going on at the same time, and I just got hit 
You had, you had the course in grad school. Yeah, I, I actually right at the end when I was um, just okay, leaving yeah. grad school. I mean, it was com that's when yeah, it was yeah. coming into my life, and it was just too much. I was just totally overwhelmed with it, and then. Even when grad school, when I stepped out of that, just the relationship in the course, I thought, how do people even do this? How could I thought back, how could I have a, a, an academic, you know, school curriculum going and a relationship and the course? I just, I would think at the beginning it was absolutely impossible. But that's just because I'd been under repression as a dynamic for so long that when I stopped doing that, the the intensity level went way up mm. and you know it, it did I I'm amazed but I was steered through that and I did navigate through that but yeah it's it's pretty intense mm. well, well actually that was one of the things that so yesterday when I was having just that like what I would call vigilance every thought that would come like a perceived problem oh let me recognize the problem so it can be solved and then I'd, I'd like wait for that experience that would just come but then this intensity came that didn't I had no thoughts there was no conscious thoughts that were there but it wasn't like I was in the relief it was just mm -hmm. almost like I would hear sometimes like Krishnamurti would just have these headaches or something mm -hmm. and they wouldn't and there's nothing you could do to make it go away but I couldn't be more vigilant either and mm -hmm. Is that a normal phase, or have you experienced that? I think it's, you know, if we're honest, we you could say, well, there was a very much of a, of an intellectual perspective and a persona, like a mask, that was like the standard mode of operating and interacting with the world. And then when that starts to loosen and wash away, you know, there's more fear and trepidation because it's like something that was believed to be helpful or believed to be protective is is starting to crack open and, and fall away. And, and you know, the, the whole idea, the judgment was only invented by the ego to bring order into chaos. So the ego belief system itself is chaos. Yeah. And then judgment is the device to minimize Chaos. The chaos, minimize the fear without letting it go. So therefore the mind becomes addicted to judgment, the sleeping wow. mind. And then then it perceives everything's upside down then, and then wow. it perceives letting go of the judgment as, as yeah. ultimate punishment, as going back into the chaos, as being wow. vulnerable, being volatile. So you can see, you know, it's, it's, this journey inward is very different. It, it's for most people on the planet that they aren't really aware of, of the dynamics or what's going on in the mind and all the, the sleeping mind and the authority problem is they're not aware of any of that. And so, you know, it's just they just see it as devastating things that happen, accidents and devastating things. And right before I came on, I got a Facebook message that was forwarded about a man who, who fell in love with this beautiful woman and then she developed a skin disease and and grew uglier and uglier and and he was away on a trip but he was in an automobile accident and he comes back blind and and how the two go along until the wife <laughs> falls down the stairs and I mean, as I was watching this with all this music playing like okay where is this going you know and then <laughs> Wife falls down the stairs, dies, and and uh, and the guy, the husband's all heartbroken, and then they come to the husband and say, "You can't even walk without her. How are you even going to walk?" And then he pulls his glasses off and he says, "I was never blind. I I just didn't want her to be hurt about uh, me seeing her ugly, and so I pretended to be blind all these years." <laughs> I mean, this was this was the end, and I have to just say, I just had to laugh because I thought, oh my God, and forward this to all your friends. I'm like, Hell, if I'm going to forward this, oh my. the miracle in action, <laughs> right? You know, pretending to be blind, and then the whole thing was like, we have to pretend 
so people don't have the shortcomings that they have if we want to live a happy life. And it reminds me a bit of when I was in the spiritual community years ago, and back in the 1990s, and they said, they'd come to me and they go, come on, just take it till you make it. And I was like, I will not, I do not like the sound of that, I will not be faking anything, thank you very much, that is not my life's calling or my purpose. And and even like throw, even if if I go to the core of things and it's dark, I'm gonna, you know, let the, face the darkness. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna cover it. I've done enough of that. So but I had to just laugh because that was the, the thing that I got, and it, it really reminded me of like systematic uh, de denial, systematic pretense, systematic. Uh, de it's a delusion, That's you know. A good to, story. <laughs> Needless to say, I didn't forward it to anybody. <laughs> we, just, we just share it with everyone in the right context. <laughs> in the right context, yeah. You never know what you're going to get, but it's, yeah, it's kind of funny. Well, Frank, um, one of our friends in uh, Europe kept recommending this series to me called Kidding. And I finally got the first episode, and it's Jim Carrey's new series, where he's, his, name, his name is Mr. Pickles. And uh, it's like, it's a Mr. Rogers, basically. Mm. He's, it's like a, a, spoof isn't the right word, but it's like, he's like a Mr. Rogers with his own emotional troubles. And his son died a year before. So the opening episode, he's on there and he says, I need to do a show about death. And if you remember, Mr. Rogers, I think his first show, one of them was on death or mm -hmm. one of the first yeah. big ones. He would go after those topics, yeah. Yeah. Well, so he wants to do it and his producers are saying no and he's losing connection with his family. And I haven't, the end of the episode is basically he starts to go crazy because he's not using the show to be authentic. And I thought interesting that that show would come into me because I feel, I don't know, I just, maybe a bit of a side topic, but I just feel so grateful that I even have this because for some reason it's like these things happen to me and then I don't know what is going on. I mean, intellectually I might, but just to be able to sit down here with you and actually say it all and, mm -hmm. and have somebody yeah just I don't know like it's more even than hearing me than the answers or something like I'm, I'm yeah. a full yeah. and I thought wow it's funny that this is the method for me because I don't have other means right now yeah. but grateful yeah 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 I think it's it takes a lot to to come to a sense of integrity but when we talk about integrity it's not just you know your, what you say and your behavior being consistent with everything that you perceive and and feel and think and and desire, believe, every, all those levels of mind, you know, that they're all congruent and consistent. So it's it's like a fuller picture, but it's, yeah, it takes a lot to really go for that. And, uh, you know, everybody, you know, at some level can know knows that if there's a, some kind of a game or scam or uh, inauthenticity or whatever, you know, they used to call it the BS uh, meter, for, for bullshit, the BS meter, you know, there's something there that starts to realize at some point, like, oh, I'm not doing this for any uh, anybody else or for mm. anything in the mm. world. This mm. is about healing and yeah. about coming to peace of mind and and that's a wonderful thing because then, you know, it's like you have that feeling like, well, I've got nothing to lose now, yeah. nothing to lose in the world, so yeah. I'm I'm going to go for it. Yeah. Wow. You then even what you write is more authentic. Everything. Okay, I'm willing to be wrong, but this is what I feel. This is what I think, yeah. and I'm just praying I don't lose anything. Yeah. Process. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. I like it. It's funny, I, I recently watched that movie, uh, Bedazzled, with Elizabeth Hurley. I did too, I just yeah. watched it. And, you know, all the different wishes and everything, but but it just, it, the, I think the funniest thing is, Brendan Fraser, is that he he admits that his life isn't fulfilling, and so <laughs> he kind of feels like, might as well, go with, might it well <laughs> go with it, you know, and, and he said, what can it cost you? And and Elizabeth Hurley playing the devil says, yeah, the most it could cost you is just your soul. And she says, but that's nothing. And then he goes, 
Yeah, so he gets into his wishes, but each one, you know, he he supposed to be real sensitive that time when he's on the beach, you know, trying to be a real sensitive guy. Just, he plays it out to the <laughs> hilt and has these guys come along and, and start kicking sand into his mouth. <laughs> and he's, he's just trying to continue to be sensitive. It just shows that it's impossible to pick any kind of like trait or anything as, as if you would know even right. what would, would be helpful yeah, 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 yeah. or what would be worth wishing for in this yeah, world. Yeah. And in the end, you know, I was named after David, King David in the Bible and famous for the Bible, the 23rd Psalm, the, the Psalms of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And which gets down to that be, be still and know that I'm God. Be content. Uh, come into your full awakening of, of who you really are, which is not a, a being that wants. You know, it's it's that's the human condition. The ego is lack and wants. And the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And so that really reminds me that, okay, this is really being convinced mm. of that true... Mm forgiveness mm. and then that sense of that beingness that's even behind behind the forgiveness mm. yeah. I shall not want I shall not want people to like me I shall not want credit definitely blame I shall not want <laughs> right, right right it seems like it's every I just had experience it really seems like you d wouldn't want blame but credit well you know maybe. but I was like Wow, in terms of state of mind, it took me off and was more, it takes me off and more tricky too because it, it is appealing. It's like, and then you lose the state of mind easier with that. I mean, the other one might just be, show, I don't know how it all works, but I really saw like that things you think you like holds you back mm -hmm. as much, if not more. I don't know if that's in there. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not. As much as where the fear is apparent. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because you do want to drop that fear like a hot potato. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You got more lines? Well, uh, yeah. Lines? I've got some things I wanted to go over with you. So, computers front and center. Miracles you are not asked to perform have not lost their value. They are still expressions of your own state of grace. But the action aspect of the miracles should be controlled by me because of my complete awareness of the whole plan. I really like that when he says miracles should be involuntary. Mm -hmm. But uh, the action aspect should be controlled by me. But if I guess it's, he's just saying that you really got to listen to what I tell you to do yeah. underneath. But something I'm feeling like there's something I'm missing with that right now. Well, I think it's just that humbleness of like. You know, the only way that miracles can be successfully directed is from one who's transcended time and space and is literally standing at the end uh, and literally in charge of the plan of the atonement. And it's just that, to me, that's just ex extreme humbleness. But also, that's being honest of starting yeah. to realize that, that how would you know in, in yeah all circumstances yeah. and situations, what would be most helpful, you know, you would need direction. So to me, when he says, you know, the action component should should be controlled by me, and then he's bringing the other part saying, miracles that you do not perform have not lost their value, you know, it's, he's just bringing in this idea that there's really no loss involved in this whole thing. So you don't have to have that thought like, oh, I missed my chance, or Wow. I blew it, or I didn't, I wasn't wow. ready enough, or whatever. He's trying to wash away the guilt from somehow believing that things could have been better if they were different. It's just a, a way of saying, you know, just trust me, and, wow. and it's it's all working very well. Wow, that's beautiful. I like that. Because while you're following the guidance, it seems so important to follow. But he's introducing this idea that, well, the state of mind is really all that's important. Yeah, something. yeah, that's it. That's it. I like it. 
Okay. Okay, my control can take over everything that does not matter, while my guidance can direct everything that does, if you show, so choose. Fear cannot be controlled by me, but it can be self-controlled. This is what I was talking about before. Self-controlled, so that fear that I'm just shoving it down. But you've kind of already addressed that in terms of just, just being aware of denial. It's not much you can really say, because in the moment, yeah. Yeah, it's it's... It reminds me of that story when Ken Wapnick went off to uh, stay with this group of nuns, and it was bad weather, and and um, Helen had a huge amount of fear at the time, and so when she consulted with Jesus, Jesus, that's where he came in with that part, I, I can't take your fear away. But I can help you with showing you the conditions in which the fear is set up. In other words, fear can be self-controlled. In other, other words, you can control the direction of your thinking. You are not a victim of the world you see. You are not at the mercy of the world you see. Every time you feel upset, it's because you're choosing to upset yourself. And I can show you the conditions that are happening in your mind while you're choosing to upset yourself, so you can stop it and and choose peace instead. So, he was saying, I can't take your fear away. He, he said that would be tinkering with the most basic law of cause and effect, and he's basically saying, our minds are equal, and that I can't, like, intervene. I can't, you know, like, just sweep down with some kind of divine intervention and, and pull the fear out. You have to be willing to look at the conditions that are there that is making it happen, that is making it seem to happen. Mm -hmm. And so, to me, that's really good because it's, it's, the Course has a lot of instruction and not only does it have instruction, specific instruction about the workbook, you know, he's very specific, oftentimes, in the workbook. And even with the conditions, the two uh, things to remember, don't do more than one lesson a day, and as best you can, try not to make exceptions. He's very helpful, he's very specific, but in the end, you have to be willing to follow the instructions. And that's part of a bigger plan, of you have to, f in the end, follow guidance that's given to unwind you from fear and doubt and mm. misperception and so forth. So, all of it works together, but, uh, you know, there, there's sometimes the ego will just want some kind of a quick fix or, you know, looking for an external savior when my salvation comes from me. You know, my mind is where the problem, the mm -hmm. belief in separation is, and my mind is where the correction is. Not in people, places, things, even in scriptures or ashrams, teachers, healers, you know, it's not, it's not really in the world. The answer is in the mind, and and yet you do have to follow the instructions to, so to speak, to bring it back to to get into that experience in the mind. So when you you answered this earlier, but so when I you know, I'm approaching like a specific project and and I get like this, like, whoa, okay. You know, is that just a time to just be like gentle or, you know, and step back from it? Or is it like, no, you gotta, you know, because it's, I haven't experienced this before where basic simple tasks are just, but there's a hurt, there's something else underneath that I can feel is causing it. Mm-hmm. And it's, I don't know if I just give space, or, come on, this is the way through. It's like, well, I think that if you've come from a belief system where you, you want to finalize things, and achieve things, and accomplish things, and finish things, and so forth, there's a lot of dismantling that happens, and you do have to be real willing to just, to, to pause at different times, like if you, start to, to get um, disoriented or dizzy, then you have to mm. kind of take note of that. Mm. You know, it's not the kind of thing where you just kind of try to push through, like okay. they always like a 
talk about like a bull in a china shop, you know, bury your way through and get get to where you're going. It's not really not that. It's more of a like a, a gentleness and it's like during the dismantling, you do have to be gentle and you do have to have a lot of mm -hmm. allowance. Mm -hmm. And I find that that's just the general movement of the whole thing, you know, is trusting, allowing, and then uh, becoming more and more aware that you're not responsible for mm. what you thought you were responsible for. You know, it's it's a washing away wow. of of all that. So when I perceive people are frustrated or angry at me because I'm s slow, <laughs> then it's really just my own judgments being projected. They're not really like that. Or yeah, yeah. it's it's just we always judge or we always look inside first. And however we feel when we look inside, then we see it in the world as if it's acted out. Wow. So that's where that cultivating that gentleness, you know, comes in. Because it's like, that's where the prayer comes in. Like, I need another way of looking at this. If if you're harsh in your mind, then it will seem like the yeah, characters yeah. are harsh. Wow. And there's no point asking them to be gentle. <laughs> no, no. It's like saying, projections of my mind, please be more gentle, and it's like, you know, the Spirit's like, well, let's cultivate oh, that gentleness that's exciting. within. Yeah, yeah. Exciting. Like it's like a real solution, yeah. finally, or something. Yeah, yeah. It's like I have to start over. <laughs> okay. You are very fearful of everything you've perceived, but have refused to accept. I mean, I'm like, what? You believe that because you've refused to accept it, you've lost control over it. That is why you see in it in nightmares or in pleasant disguises in what seems to be your happier dreams. Nothing that you have refused to accept can be brought into awareness. Now I get that last line, nothing you've, that makes sense. But all that other stuff, you perceive it but refuse to, how can you perceive it if you're not accepting it? Like so, something else going on with all that. <laughs> well, it's it, you have to go back to the fundamentals of perception there. Projection makes perception. So projection makes perception, projection precedes, it's really, it's all simultaneous, but in yeah, terms yeah. of cause and effect, it, it's, it's, the, it's the dynamic. And then, what is projection but the attempt to get rid of something you do not want? Okay, so projection makes perception, and then projection is the attempt to get rid of something you do not want. And the reason you don't want it is because you are unable to accept that, that, that it's a thought in your mind. In other words, attack thoughts are projected because mm. it's mm. too intense to hold mm. on to the attack thoughts. And so pleasant disguises or seen as if something or wow. someone else in the world is doing it, wow. is a way to alleviate the intensity of the attack. And then, of course, forgiveness goes even further back, where it's like, come back, back, back to the light, back to the Holy Spirit, which is just this awareness that attack is impossible, that there's only one mind, and that mind is incapable of attacking, because that mind is the mind of Christ, and it's an idea in the mind of God, and God doesn't attack, and Christ doesn't attack, and light doesn't attack. So, so it's it's looking at that. So when you see something and 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 choose to perceive it as if it's happening outside, there's it's like you're rejecting it from your mind and and saying, no, look, it's look at there, it is right there, it's out there, it's not me at all. Even with we symptoms. Yeah. Need to hear this over and over yeah. and over. Oh yeah, it's so it's like, opposite of the whole way of the world thinking that you just do. You almost, I would say, you do need to saturate yourself in this, and that's was important for me. Before the travels, before all the things in <laughs> books and all these online things and this and this, you know, it was just the Course, reading it, praying, having hermitages, doing all this and that, that doesn't show for anything in the world. Nobody, you know, how many people care if you took a hermitage, you know, it's like, <laughs> why are you telling me you took a hermitage, you know? 
they, they think it's that? basically a waste, a waste of time to take a hermitage, and it, you you know you have to take it to make it to even to heal <laughs> to, to know, live to live right, and and yet those are the kind of things that you don't ever see in people's bios, you know, unless it's like a bio of of. Thich Nhat Hanh or some, or some, even Thich Nhat Hanh, that's not a good example because he wrote a hundred books and he travels all over the world. But imagine like a monk, you know, your biography. Well, I was in Hermitage for six years in this place, then I moved over to this cave or, you know. <laughs> Why are you telling me this? I don't know. I, it's just that no, the world's, no, that's what they just yeah, the world's yeah. backwards and upside down. So it's like when they have the early years of Ramana Maharshi, People are like yawning. <laughs> he, went, he moved to this cave. He moved over here. Children threw rocks at him. He, he got away. He moved over there. You know, the first, the decades of his life, it's like it doesn't like read some kind of great resume. He just was silent and, and on the move a bit, so he didn't get chased out or stoned or whatever. And then. Then the end with the ashram, you know, that gets a little more publicity and everything. But when he's all happy and people come from all over the world to see him, but yeah, you don't get any praise or kudos for those things that are really the most most helpful. <laughs> Nobody sees that. They see me happy, joyful, gliding around and everything, but they don't see the hermitages. They don't see the the inward times, the prayers and the contemplations. Patience. Yeah, the patience with everything. They don't, they see, and then they just see an outcome. They go, oh, look, it's a happy, peaceful David, so... I want to be like I him. want to be just like that. <laughs> Do you want to hear what I went through? No, I just want to be... I want, I was like, just add water and stir, you know. I want, I want a happy state of mind and I want it to be quick and yet you know there has to be that dedication and devotion and mind training mm. yeah it's beautiful yeah thank you more another yeah, one you're digging ready? through we're digging through those things <laughs> yeah this is just a funny line but you who cannot even control yourself should hardly aspire to control the universe. <laughs> I thought that was a good one. Yeah. Okay, so this one's about guilt. In any union with a brother in which you seek to lay your guilt upon him, you will feel guilty. Uh, it is inevitable that those who suffer guilt will attempt to displace it because they do not believe in it. I go a little foggy when I read that. The main concern... Their main concern is to perceive the source of guilt outside themselves, beyond their own control. So, how do the control... I know these are metaphysical, but when I hear you answer, I feel something. So, how do control and guilt relate? Are they the same thing? Or, yeah. Well, it's ultimately guilt, you know, you might say that everyone talks about the Holy Trinity. The unholy Trinity is sin, fear, and, and guilt. And then... It's so intense, this deep kind of sense of wrongness or feeling of like an ontological guilt. And so it's trying to deal with it, but, but the way the ego says to deal with it is see it where it's not, which see it in the world, project it. Yeah. Project it. And the way that the Holy Spirit deals with it is like this, you know, perfect love cast out fear, bring the thought systems of love and fear together, because they've been dissociated, that's how they're maintained, through this dissociation process and this projection process, but bring them together and then the fear will disappear and the love, the light will remain. So, so there is a false sense of control that the ego, you know, promotes, which is to use the projected world and it's almost like a a smoke screen, a dumping device, a distractive device. Wow. The world like is very made by the ego to maintain itself, to perpetuate itself. And and the Holy Spirit's always saying, bring it back, bring it back to your mind. 
let's look at this together. Let's, let's look at the guilt. You know, the more, he even says at one point, the more you look at fear, meaning in your mind, the less you'll see of it in the world. Because mm -hmm. the more you look open-eyed, you know, with the Holy Spirit, you, you know, you, you, it's, you see it's not really there. Yeah. It's, it's by being kept hidden yeah, yeah. and denied that it seems to have an existence. But once you let that denial be washed away, then the more you look at fear, the less you see of it. Because you experience more of the light that you are and then see that reflected, mm -hmm. you know, in the world. Until at the end where there's a merge that happens and there's no reflections anymore because there's nothing really out there. There's no, there is no out there, out there, like mm. Fred Allen Wolf says mm. in uh, What the Bleep. Dreams are perceptual temper tantrums in which you literally scream, I want it thus. Like this is, this is what's coming up for me in ways like that I, just around simple little things. It's like, it doesn't say I want it thus. That's, I'm sure that's what it means, but it's like, I need this. I can't, if I don't, and that's not fair. And, yeah. and I, it seems so intense. And since we were big on communication and everything, it's, do I communicate that or not? And so far, all my witnesses are just like, this is my time to really not so much worry about communicating, mm -hmm. but just to really use it. Otherwise, it could be like that question itself is like a displacement trick that delays the energy from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really right. face it. Really yeah. facing it. Yeah. But it's, yeah, wow. Okay. Yeah, free the dream of your ability to control reality by substituting a world that you prefer is terrifying. Yeah. yeah. That's good that it's it's juxtaposing that word control with reality. You can't, you know, you who cannot even control yourself should hardly aspire to control the universe. You cannot control reality. Why? Because reality is spirit. Reality is creation reality is what is and and there is no aspect of that that word control that even relates to reality you know to try to control reality is is like a madman gone completely insane and um, of course that's what the ego is it's mad it's a tiny mad idea it's insane it has no value. It's a death wish. It it has made up its own version of God, a, p a punishing, punitive God, which isn't what God even is. It attributes things to God, like sacrifice and punishment, and you know, and anger, and all kinds of things that have nothing to do at all with God. And yet, that wish we can call it a death death wish is the wish. To, to be able to create oneself however one wants to be, you know, and that's what the cosmos is. It's, it's, it's the belief that it's possible to create yourself. So there's the core control issue, the authority issue, is, is am I the author of myself or am I authored by spirit? Yeah. Authored by spirit would mean I still am spirit. Spirit authors like itself. Love created me like itself. The wish to be a self-author, to create myself, that brings in time, space, bodies, brings in all kinds of configurations and all kinds of distortions. It's miscreation. It doesn't have anything at all to do with creation. And that belief in miscreation and the ability to create yourself to be any way that you want to be, any way that you wish to be, is another way to say it, is, is what the authority issue is. So in the end, it's really we're cutting to the chase, we're getting down to that humbleness. That's why the mystics and saints were humble. That's why Jesus was humble. That's why avatars are humble, because they accept their true strength, their true power, their true essence, their true being, is real. And you might say, 
they release, some say denounce the world or forgive the world, certainly let go of believing in it. Why would you continue to believe in a substitute identity? Very, very humbling this whole journey is. There's that book behind you, The Mystical Teachings of Jesus, where there's, there's Jesus just in prayer, eyes closed, and the, like a glowing light, you know, and there's that word behold right by his his face. You know, it's it's so much of a of a surrender into the humbleness and it's it's actually humble to accept yourself as God created you. And it's arrogant to think you can make yourself however you wish to be. That's why it, in the end it even changes that seem to be so dramatic on the earth plane, you know. It's nothing. It's much like Shakespeare said, it's much to do about nothing. Mm. It's it's like what version of nothing do you prefer? Well, in the end, I want no version of nothing. That was a Billy Preston song. Nothing from nothing leaves nothing. You know, it, there's there's nothing there. That, that that's why you're there's a rejoicing. Let me recognize my problems have been solved. That's a a joyful recognition. Mm -hmm. It's not attempting to manipulate the world, fix the world, change the world, make it be different in any way. You know, that's there's no humbleness in trying to be empowered as a human being. Mm -hmm. There's true humbleness in letting go of these human mm -hmm. ideas and thoughts and they always say, but be reach your full humanness. Well, I'm, I'm more reach your full spirit, you know, by releasing mm -hmm. the illusion of humanness. That's that's what I'm talking about. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I just had this beautiful podcast this week uh, with this gentleman, Carl Gruber, and, and uh, one of his early questions was, you know, he'd heard that Gary Renard had been on this big um, show, and I reminded him it was Coast to Coast. He said, yeah, that's it, Coast to Coast. And he said, do you ever get, uh, like, invited to the like the mainstream shows and everything? And I, I said, no. I said, actually, uh, recently I had to go through a pre-interview for the same show, and uh, I think I was so happy and joyful and just being myself that I disqualified myself. It was too, too much joy for the mainstream, and it and that starts to, you know, you start to see the world's backwards and upside down. That it's not really about reaching people. It's not really about, you know, people used to talk about the hundredth monkey and, you know, and all this. But it's actually, it's an inward journey, and it's into mm. not compromising your authenticity, mm. not compromising your humbleness, not compromising your joy, your peace, your happiness, and then whatever radiates from that, that integrity w will be a blessing to the whole universe. Even beyond time and space, it's just the most glorious blessing. But the world has it all backwards. The world thinks it's about, you know, having more followers or more listeners or, you know, reaching more people and everything. And it really, ultimately, you come down to see it's one mind, you know. And, and Jesus even says that in the Course, mind reaches to itself, it does not go out. Within itself is everything, you within it and it within you. You know, he's got all these beautiful sayings just talking about how it's just all mind. You're not a, a mind and a body, you're holy mind, purely mind, holy, W-H-O-L-L-Y, holy mind, purely mind. And that once you come back to that realization, that's what creation is, that's what Christ is, that's what truth is, you mm -hmm. know, that's, that's the whole point of all of it. So a lot of the questions that I ask, like, Okay, is it time to step back or be in function? Or, you know, I'll hear you say, function is the way out. And there's a way to hear that where it involves a specific. And then, but really, the answer is that they're this, 
they're the same. Like it's, yeah. it's that either or thinking, but there is a state of mind where the body may do things, but it's. Yeah, the ultimate function of atonement is is the, this realization of of mind, mm. holy mind, purely mm. mind. You know, that's that's it. That's why Mary Baker Eddy said, "There's no mind mm. in matter. Mm. There's no life, truth, mm. substance, intelligence in matter." You know, she was right on. Just hit the nail on mm. the head. Right on. So beautiful. Mm. So true. That's why there were all these healings that happened because the. The purity was was the recognition in the mind, very different from anything we've ever been raised with, anything we ever learned. You know, it's like it takes learning and just puts, turns it around. You know, it's like what you mean? Everything I ever learned was upside down. Yeah, then it's it's a bit disorienting during the turn. But then when once the turn comes full circle, then it, everything stabilizes and it's like ah peace peace so that's that's why it's so profound mm -hmm. and even that function idea you, it's kind of it got used and used well i'm here only to be truly helpful and and then it starts to you know mm -hmm. even be seen as mind as well of course mm -hmm. if the corrections in the mind then the function must be in the mind as well. And how do you go that way? By letting Spirit, Jesus, be in charge of of the miracles. We're back full circle mm -hmm. to just being being in that truly helpful prayer and then if there's mm -hmm. something, a word to be spoken or something that needs to be done, you know, it will feel more just automatic, like it's done through. No sense of strain or struggle, no comparison, no pushing through or fighting through anything, mm. yeah. It's involuntary. Very involuntary. Yeah, very peaceful. <sighs> Resting in God. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. You're very welcome. Yeah, thanks everybody. <laughs> mm -hmm.